شريعة بأي دين بأي دولة يا سيد حسن On this Tuesday, June 9th, I'm Yumna Nalfa. You're watching the English newscast on Future Television, and these are today's top stories. Former President Michel Sleiman voices indirect opposition to the Free Patriotic Movement as well as Hezbollah for what he says is paralyzing the cabinet and dragging Lebanon into the Syrian war. Doctors protest over Lebanon state prosecutor who announced over the weekend that a doctor was detained last week over the misdiagnosis of a baby resulting in the amputation of her four limbs. And Barack Obama, the U.S. president, admits that the United States can, has no complete strategy for training Iraqi forces to fight ISIS. Former President Michel Sleiman has indirectly criticized the Free Patriotic Movement and Hezbollah for paralyzing the cabinet, he says, and dragging the war of Syria into Lebanon. Following talks with a delegation from the future parliamentary bloc, Sleiman says it is unacceptable to impose conditions on the cabinet. The president added that certain parties will always make threats, but he will back Prime Minister Tamam Salam regardless. Sleiman criticized Hezbollah without naming it, saying it should focus on Lebanon's project rather than the plans of Iran and Syria. Shmeyel also described the current paralysis as a coup against the Constitution and a suicide. He said whether Hezbollah was right or wrong, there should be force exerted and joint efforts to resolve the country's problems. Ahmed Fatfad, the future bloc MP, stated that everyone should commit to the Babda Declaration because Lebanon's interests come first. Lebanon's state prosecutor announced over the weekend that a doctor detained last week has confessed to misdiagnosing a baby which may result to a condition that require the amputation of her four limbs. State Prosecutor Samir Hamoud said that Dr. Isam Malouf confessed during a police interrogation to misdiagnosing Ella Tanous, who is less than one year old. For that reason, the physician was arrested and referred to Beirut's investigative judge, George Rizit, last week. Malouf's arrest during interrogation prompted the order of physicians to issue a work stoppage order to its 12,000 members in protest. Antoine Bustani, the head of the order, said Friday that the doctors would continue to strike until Malouf was released. Ella Tanous's case continued to deteriorate and her parents opted to take her to the American University Hospital in Beirut, where her limbs were later amputated. At least 49 civilians, including six children, were killed in Syrian government airstrikes on a town in Idlib province. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said the raids hit a square in the town of Janudia, west of the province, which is now almost completely under the control of opposition forces. Also, regime military aircraft fired missiles on the town of Tal Rafat in Aleppo province, and it killed a man, two women, and a child. Separately, a U.S.-led coalition airstrike in Aleppo province killed seven family members. The coalition has been targeting ISIS in Syria since September, though military officials say they've limited their targets to avoid civilian casualties. The party of Yemen's former president Ali Abdullah Saleh, a key ally of Shia Houthi rebels, welcomed UN-brokered peace talks due to open in Switzerland at the weekend. The General People's Congress said it had not yet received a formal invitation from the United Nations, but the UN envoy met with party representatives in the rebel-held capital in late May as part of his efforts to convene the talks in Geneva. Saleh himself is under UN sanctions for his support for the rebels and did not take part in the meetings, according to party sources. He ruled for 33 years before being forced from power in 2012 after a bloody year-long uprising through the support of his loyalists in the army behind the Houthis in their offensive that forced his successor into exile in March. Coming up next, Animals Lebanon, working to protect animals through campaigns and rescue, holds its annual gala dinner. Linda Tamim has the latest. Welcome back. You're watching the 420 o'clock news on Future Television. An Egyptian court sentenced 11 men to death for their part in the country's worst outbreak of soccer stadium violence, 
which killed more than 70 fans and injured at least 1,000 back in 2012. Many of the dead were crushed when panicked fans tried to escape from the Port Said Stadium after a post-match pitch invasion by supporters of the local Said al-Masri. Others fell or were thrown from terraces, witnesses said. The court, whose session was televised live, sentenced one of the men in abstentia. Other defendants received between 15 and 5 years in jail, and some were found innocent. The verdicts can be appealed. The judge referred the death sentence in April to Egypt's Grand Mufti Shaw'i Alam, the country's most senior religious authority, and a step required by law for convictions in capital cases. The Mufti's opinion is not binding and not made public. U.S. President Barack Obama has admitted that the U.S. has no complete strategy for training Iraqi forces to fight the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant Group. The U.S. President made the comments after meeting the Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi on the sidelines of the G7 summit in Germany. ISIL has continued to gain ground in both Iraq and Syria, despite months of U.S.-led airstrikes and the U.S. training thousands of Iraqi troops. Obama touted significant progress in areas where the U.S. has trained Iraqis to fight, but said forces without U.S. assistance are often ill-equipped and suffer from poor morale. ISIS fighters captured their key Anbar provincial capital of Ramadi last month, prompting Defense Secretary Ash Carter to lament that Iraqi troops lack the will to fight. Obama said that the 3,000 U.S. service personnel in Iraq sometimes find themselves with more training capacity than recruits. Three firefighters are missing and feared dead after a ferocious blast tore through a fuel depot and sparked a fire that threatened to engulf a nearby filling station on a outskirts of Ukraine's capital of Kiev. Video posted on the internet showed the force of the explosion and the heat wave it produced, setting aflame several fire trucks and ambulances that were rushed to the scene on Tuesday morning. A fireman wearing a silver heat resistant suit and mask was seen running away from the spot of the disaster for safety. Interior Minister Arsen Avakov said the initial explosion hit a fuel depot near the Vaskili village, some 30 kilometers southwest of Kiev. A spokesman for Ukraine's emergencies ministry said that he was aware of six people injured in total. Hong Kong and Macau have issued warnings against traveling to South Korea, where a seventh person has died from the Middle East respiratory syndrome and another eight new cases have been reported overnight. The latest cases have brought the total number of people infected to 95, making the South Korean outbreak the biggest outside Saudi Arabia, where the disease was first identified. Carrie Lam, Hong Kong's second highest official, announced the country would issue a red alert against non-essential travel to South Korea. A red alert is defined as a significant threat according to the Hong Kong government and means people should adjust travel plans and avoid non-essential travel. The Chinese territory of Macau also advised residents to avoid travel to South Korea unless absolutely necessary and said it would require people entering local health care facilities to wear masks as a precaution against MERS. Animals Lebanon, a Lebanese NGO which works to protect animals through legislation, education, campaigns and rescue. It held its annual gala dinner at the White Rooftop Club. Animal welfare activists and supporters had many achievements to celebrate this year, including the approval of the Animal Protection and Welfare Law by the Council of Ministers on February 4th. Attendees enjoyed a great evening full of raffle prizes and uplifting entertainment with Chris Jor, a Lebanese-American singer best known for her appearances on the debut season of The Voice Arabia, and Hanin Al-Alam, one of the most versatile and charismatic oriental violinists in the present scene. Environment Minister Mohamed Mashnout was also there. He attended the event, praised Animals Lebanon's work, and reiterated his ministry's support for animal welfare in the country. Linda Tamir was on site, and these are a few reactions and highlights from the event. Tell us about the achievements of Animals Lebanon this year. Well, uh, we've been working very hard on uh, animal welfare laws and uh, this year, after six years of persistent hard work, our laws were finally approved by the Council of Ministers and this is a very big thing because it means that we now have the right to close down pet stores that are abusing animals or not up to the standards of uh, you know, animal welfare and protection. It gives us the right to as well license zoos so that you don't see places anymore that 
have animals suffering in their cages. Um, it goes into pet ownership as well so that people are no longer able to abandon their animals. No, there is now accountability and it also forces or, or invites the municipalities to deal with the stray animal population uh, more humanely and in a way that, uh, that, that improves their health as well as diminishes the population that we now see on the streets. So we're not there yet, but having the Council of Ministers approve the law means that we're, we're this much closer to getting the law enacted. To us it's great. We have more than 450 people coming out to support a very deserving cause. Uh, this is the biggest gathering of animal welfare people in the country and it's a fabulous night. Uh, this raises the money to help millions of animals. We're changing laws, we're joining conventions. This just isn't about stray animals, it's not about slaughterhouses. It's really about changing a whole culture of the country and recognizing the importance of animals in our lives. So we're talking about improving communities, improving families, making sure that money are more profitable for people and it's going to be a great night. What have you achieved this year? This year so far, uh, just a few days ago, we got news about uh, a case of a chimpanzee named Charlie that we confiscated last year. So just as of Thursday, the case is final now. So this was a really a landmark legal ruling. For the first time, we were able to recognize that the animals have both uh, mental and physical welfare. And we hope to use this ruling in future to be able to save more animals. Where is Charlie now? Charlie's in Brazil. He's very happy. He's eating mangoes. Uh, we should go visit him quite soon, I think. Uh, animals are my passion, and I love animals. I love speaking on behalf of animals since they cannot speak for themselves. And uh, it gives me great pleasure to see us changing the attitude of people in Lebanon and uh, promoting animal welfare and making a difference. You guys celebrating tonight? Yeah, well, it's about uh, uh, animals, animals' rights, and uh, we're here to support Animals Lebanon. How important is it to celebrate animals' rights in Lebanon? Uh, I, I think any country that uh, claims to have reached a certain degree of civilization, you would find that animal rights and animal laws are there. And our understanding is that these laws have recently been passed by Parliament. That's a major step forward. We haven't had these laws for years and years and years. So we're really, we're really happy that this thing has happened. And at last, someone will look after these poor souls. Do you really think that this law is going to make a huge difference in this country? Uh, definitely, if there is vision and if there is uh, a proper follow-up, definitely they will, uh, they will get it. I think the dangerous thing is uh, when we are aware of the problem and we keep silent. So it's like the marathon, you know, it takes, uh, it's, it's a long journey. It, it can't happen with, uh, with one uh, sprint. So I can't but wish them good luck. We're there for them and with them. Uh, do you think the government has been very supportive so far of this law? Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, these laws wouldn't have been passed. And as May said, uh, you will see a snowball effect over a period of time once there is sufficient awareness about these laws and their importance. How important is it for Lebanon, actually, to respect animal welfare? It's very important. If we ever want to advance in life, we have to, we have to work with everything, whether it's humans or animals. At the end of the day, it's all the same cause. You have to help. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Former President Michel Slaiman voices indirect opposition to the Free Patriotic Movement and Hezbollah for paralyzing the cabinet and dragging the war into Syria and Lebanon. Doctors protest over Lebanon's state prosecutor who announced over the weekend that a doctor was detained over the misdiagnosis of a baby resulting in the amputation of her four limbs. U.S. President Barack Obama admits that the U.S. has no complete strategy for training Iraqi forces to fight the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. Those are your Tuesday headlines live on Future Television. Join us again tomorrow for all the latest. Signing off. Have a good night.